All right, it's good to be here this morning. If you're glad you're in the Lord's house, let's hear a good hearty amen. amen. Well, the rest of you, I don't know what you're here for, but anyway, let's have a good time in the Lord's house today. and It's good to see you. We're glad to have our visitors with us, those of you that are visiting with us for the first time. And those of you that have come back to visit with us on a second time or whenever, we're certainly thankful and glad that you chose to be a part of the worship hour here this morning. And uh, we mentioned a prayer request. We had quite a number this morning in the prayer room, but especially we want to remember Brother Clarence Epley that's still in the Heart Center and still in the uh, coronary care unit. Uh, so we want to keep him in our prayers. And then, of course, uh, others that we've been mentioning throughout uh, the last couple of weeks has had hospital stays, Brother Bill. He's doing good, and thank the Lord for that. Brother Dennis Bishop's doing well, and, and then keep those in your prayer. And then uh, John Wright's in the hospital. We will pray for him. Bill Page spent some time in the hospital this week, and we want to keep him in our prayers. He's at home now. We got a thank you card here from Bill and Henrietta, and it just says, uh, to our church family, it says, thank you so much for all your prayers, your calls, and visits. The flowers are beautiful and look so nice in our home. God is so good. I say amen right there. It says, he brought us to Emmanuel Baptist. There's no doubt that he guided us here. Thank the Lord for that. He gave us such a great church family that was only, only talks, not only talks to talk, but also walks to walk. That's a good testimony. And now God has brought us through this illness with flying colors. As I said, God is good. We love you and thank him for all of you. And that's from Sister Henrietta. She's in the choir. And Brother Bill. So we uh, appreciate that. Glad Brother Bill's doing so much better. Now, also, we have a, a wedding invitation here. Let me read this right quick. Uh, it's uh, Jamie Powell and James Barry Jackson. Jamie's here in the choir. And uh, they said they'd like to invite you to share in the celebration of love as we exchange our marriage vows on Saturday, the 15th of October, 2011 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Roebuck. Reception immediately following. Is the reception going to be here? Okay. Reception will be here, and it's RSVP, so you be sure to uh, be praying for this young couple. It's uh, about a month away, but uh, just keep praying for them and pray the Lord to just be with them. Then this week is the start of the um, conference over in Taylor's that Brother Robert Thomas is uh, Helping with it's the Association of Fundamentalism Evangelizing Catholics, and uh, Brother Robert will be speaking on uh, Tuesday at eleven o'clock or eleven thirty, and then also um, Wednesday at ten thirty. That's over in Taylor's. Uh, we plan to go over on Tuesday. If anybody would like to go with us, if you would meet here at the church, be here about nine fifteen. It actually starts at ten, and then after Brother Robert uh, finishes speaking at twelve thirty. Uh, they're going to have lunch. So if you'd like to go with us and be a part of that, uh, then we'd like for you to go. Be here at 9.15 on Tuesday morning. And then now we've got a trip planned for tomorrow, uh, whitewater rafting. And, uh, but it's supposed to rain. I know they say rain or shine, you're going to get wet. But I just, you know, we're going to, I don't, know, I don't want to start out wet. Amen. If I get wet, that's one thing. But if I don't want to start out wet. But Brother uh, Alvin's, uh, of course, having to work on Sunday mornings now. But he'll be here tonight. He's going to check the, I told Beth to get him to check things out and see what he thinks. And we'll make a further announcement about that uh, tonight, okay? And uh, just see what happens. All right. Be much in prayer. Let me just say, boy, we had a great time this past Thursday night at the Tadpole Fish Camp. We had 86 of the people that went. And we had some good fellowship. And we had some good food. I appreciate uh, uh, Brother Jesse's uh, son, Jimmy Talent. He owns the Tadpole. And well, the service was excellent. The food was good, and uh, I put a plug in for him. And uh, if you can, uh, you know, go over and, and patronize him. They call it, they help us. Uh, we have golf tournaments. Jimmy's never said no about sponsoring a hole. And and uh, but I go over there because it's good food anyway. Man, I'd go if he didn't sponsor a hole. But uh, I appreciate Jimmy for doing uh, doing that and the good service that we had. And we all had a good time. Sorry those of you that wasn't able to come for some reason, but maybe next time we'll do something like that again. And it's a good church fellowship, and I appreciate our people doing that. Let's stand and go to the Lord in word of prayer. Let's ask the Lord's blessing this morning to be upon the service. Pray we'll just have a good time this morning. I'm praying if there's somebody here this morning that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying they'll get saved. You know what, children? We need to be clo drawn closer to the Lord. And I'm praying this morning also if there's some here this morning that are saved. 
You know, folks, when we get saved, we just need to do the right thing. It may not be popular. And just to be honest with you, it may not be what we want to do. But last night I went to, over to the auction with Brother Donnie and Sister Faye. I, I met them over there to hear a group uh, sing uh, Driven. And um, they sang a song, He Made a Change. And let me just say this this morning. If you've been saved by the grace of God, if he hadn't made a change in your life, there's something wrong. If you're not convicted, of, if you profess to be saved, uh, this is free, by the way. I'm not charging for this. If you're saved by the grace of God and you're doing things in your life that's wrong and you're not convicted of it, I'd really check up and make sure I was saved this morning. And the only reason I'm saying that is because of this. We just don't ever know when it's going to be the last time we'll have an opportunity to get right with the Lord. So I pray this morning, if you're here and not saved, you'll get saved. If you're here and you are saved, you'll have those things in your life taken out that wouldn't bring honor to the Lord Jesus. Let's ask the Lord's blessing this morning to be upon the service and pray that God's will be done. Brother Robert, would you pray for us, please? Please turn with me to page number 84 in your songbook, page 84, Mansion Over the Hilltop. And we'll sing all three verses of Mansion Over the Hilltop. Yeah. 
before she passed on, she said, you know, I just want me a, a log cabin on a hill up there in heaven. I know God promised us a mansion, and that's what I'm going to hold him to, a mansion over the hilltop. Let's go back and sing that first verse one more time, and when we get to the chorus, sing out for God's glory and His honor. Verse number one, one more time. I'm satisfied with just a cottage. singing this morning. Yes. We're going to go back and sing that verse one more time to get this choir fired up. <laughs> I believe they're ready to sing, don't you? We got one we're going to sing for you. Just simply entitled, This is What Heaven Means to Me.
Well, when you get to thinking about heaven, sometimes you just can't contain yourself. I don't know about you, boy, but I don't, I don't know. Really, I have an idea what it's going to be like when I get there. But, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> Songwriter says, what will it be? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it one day. And I trust and pray that if you're sitting here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, that something may be said or done today. You might find yourself at an old-fashioned altar before it's eternally too late and ask Christ to come into your heart and come into your life. I don't ever want to hide the cross in my Christian life. God's done so much for me, and it's my duty to do so much for him. If the world could clearly see the cross of Calvary, that lonely hill where Jesus died that day, they would see his thorn crowned head, they would see the blood he shed. They would see the cross is still the only way. Don't let me hide the cross, dear Lord, I pray. Don't let me hide the cross for someone I stray. for the cross. All right, the choir's got one more we're going to sing for you, and then we'll turn it over to the pastor.
song shall ever be. Praise the Lamb who died for me. And I'll sing it while the ages shall roll. Amen. If you have your song book, please stand and turn to page number 112. 112. <clears throat> Come unto me. We'll sing verse number 1, verse number 2, and verse number 4. And the choir can be dismissed on the first verse. Blessed Savior, calling the oppressed. Oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I alone will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me. Wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care, do unholy feelings struggle in your breast. Bring your case to Jesus, and He will give you rest. Come unto me. By temptations <laughs> has a sense of weakness brought distress within. Christ will sanctify you if you'll claim his best in the Holy Spirit. He will give you rest. Sing it out. singing this morning, you may be seated. Trust in our Lord and Savior. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen.
Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have one too, brother. Can you get there for me? Hold me a place. All right. Amen. 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 Amen, sister. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, Lord, if anybody else is leading anybody else, then don't let the devil hold you down. All right. Sister Beth's got a song she's going to sing for us this morning, and then we'll turn it over to the pastor. a million miles away we pray for so long for God to come through and have his will and way but when God says wait to our request we just give up and want to quit
Thank you, Sister Beth. I'm sure glad today that I serve a God that's going to see to it. And sometimes uh, our ways are not his ways, and certainly our timing is not his timing. But I'm glad he does all things well. He's on time, right on time, all the time. Uh, I know the Lord's is mindful of his children, just as you're mindful of your children. How much more is our Heavenly Father? mindful of us. I like that song that talks about our Heavenly Father, a song entitled, Consider the Lilies. If he takes out time to take care of the flowers of the field, <laughs> I'm telling you, folk, he's going to take care of me and you. If he, speak, if he feeds the sparrows, the little birds that just fly through the air, if he makes provisions for them, he'll see to it. That we're taking care of. What a, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Glad I know the Lord Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. It's good to have Jab in this morning. She's been in the hospital also this uh, recently and been out sick, so we're glad she's feeling better. And then, I'm sorry, I'll get you in just a second. I'm going to mention these prayer requests before I forget them. Sister, <clears throat> excuse me, Sister Edna Burgess, his brother, was funeral was yesterday. And uh, we want to keep that family in our prayers, the Greer family, pray for his wife, his daughter, and the son-in-law, and had a grandchild, and one other sister besides Sister Edna. So we want to keep them in our prayers and lift them up. Uh, Vesta. He might sure he will. <clears throat> hey, Amen. If he brings you to it, <clears throat> he'll see you through it. Amen. Hey, man. <clears throat> and I'm glad there's an all seeing eye watching over us. Amen. And I'm glad there's an unseen hand that guides us. You see, when you can't see his hand, you have to trust his heart. If there's anything we need to learn to do as Christians this morning is we just need to learn how to trust. Amen. And uh, sometimes our faith grows weak. But the Bible doesn't ex- exhort us for our, weak to grow, for our faith to grow weak. He exhorts us that we must increase our faith. We'll be talking a little bit about that this morning and the message about faith and the examples that we have. And try to bring you a little something this morning that I hope that will help you. Before we do that, then of course we're going to receive our offering. Let's have our ushers to come forward at this time. <clears throat> you come and those of you give is given unto the Lord and uh, I'm sure the Lord will bless you and let me let me let me just uh, say why these men are coming <clears throat> this past Wednesday night we uh, voted to take on a, another missionary brother Peter I got it close didn't I man I've been practicing that all morning <clears throat> So what's so hard about that, preacher? Well, you look at the way he spells it, then you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, we voted to take them on. They're missionaries to uh, Haiti. I can acquaint with that a little bit. Men, myself, and a few other men that have uh, been to Haiti before. I've been twice. But uh, the church uh, was just had a burden to take them on as a missionary. We did that this past Wednesday night. And uh, meant to call him this morning and let him know that, but didn't have his phone number. So we'll have to... I'll contact him and let him know. But I told the folk Wednesday night, <clears throat> excuse me, throat just won't get clogged up this morning, but uh, I told the folk Wednesday night, I said, you know, every time we take on a missionary, God just seems to always do something special for us. And uh, that was on Wednesday night we took that missionary on. Then on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, uh, Brother David Harlan came by the church, and a couple of days previous to that, he brought a lady by the prayer garden to show the work that he was doing at the prayer garden. So Thursday afternoon, he came by and handed me an envelope, 
opened it up, and it was a check from that lady for $800. <clears throat> You can't now give him. Now, I've been trying to get that through you hard heads. <laughs> I'm saying that in a Christian kind of way, in a loving kind of way now. Hey, we're all hard headed. Well, if we just learn how to give, the Bible says for us to just try him. You know, he knows. I, I better not tell you this. I better not tell you this. Lord made it on my heart, and I just, mm, I'm going to wait on that one, okay? That'd be all right. <clears throat> but the Lord will bless you if you give. He's, he's blessed this church because of the efforts that we put forth to try to help others and those that are in the ministry. And God expects us to be good stewards over the Lord's work and the money of the church, and, and we try to do that. And I think beyond all my heart, the reason the Lord's blessing us the way he is. That's a blessing. Amen. Somebody doesn't even come to church here. They said they just wanted to be a part of that prayer. I say glory to God in the Lamb forever. You take that, devil, you old sorry rascal. <laughs> Amen. Let's ask the Lord's blessing this morning to be upon the gift and the giver. Pray the Lord's will be done. Brother Ronnie Allen, would you pray for us, please? Yes, thank you, our Father. You've been so good to us. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, grant it, Jesus. Amen. All right.
Thank you. I'll tell you what, just stay right there, Sister Linda, if you would, please. Brother Edward, you can too, buddy. How many of you believe Jesus is coming back? How many of you believe, how many, can I ask you, how many of you would like to be, uh, you believe, you believe he could come back tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, how many would like to be in church when he came back? Hallelujah. We're going to have a crowd here tonight. Whoopee. Amen. (laughs) Amen. I say glory right there. I'm glad I got more in the Sunday morning religion. Folk, I'd hate to think I'm going to get to heaven on something that won't bring me back and be faithful to the Lord's house. Amen. You say, preacher, you're rebuking us. Well, that's what the Bible says, rebuke. Law, long suffering, and doctrine. As long as I love you. I love you this morning. But we serve a great God. And that song they were playing, How Great Thou Art. The last verse says, When Christ shall come. And south of acclamation. If you raise your hand on Sunday morning, you ought to raise it on Sunday night. You ought to raise it on Monday. You ought to raise it on Tuesday. You ought to raise it on Wednesday. You ought to raise it every day of the week. Hey, we don't serve a God that just shows up on Sunday. But we serve a God that's 24 7, amen. 365 days a year for every day you live, you never have to worry about going and traveling alone. I'm glad He's a God. That's on the throne. And God is in control. Let's sing that last verse. Let's stand. Everybody stand. And let's sing that last verse. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation. Everybody sing out. Give us a good run there, sister. Go pick and grin. Play it loud. Let's sing it loud. God, but he is anyway, amen. You may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. Appreciate you staying over time this morning and playing that for us. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. We've already had some good singing. We've already had some <clears throat> good prayers. We, we had a good offering. You say, hey, you know that preacher? Well, I just trust God for it, amen. And uh, already had a good Sunday school. Boy, now we can just have some good preaching. I don't know where we're going to get it, but we're going to try, amen. I told somebody nice yesterday, I said, uh, we're having our tent meeting. And they said, you're going you're gonna to preach? I said, no, we've got some good preaching that week, amen. Looking forward to it. I want you to be praying much about our tent meeting that God will just uh, let us have a great time. I tell you what the Lord's really been burdened my heart to pray about on this tent meeting is this, or this revival service. You know, something could happen. And, you know, by, you know, we could have bad weather or something, and we may not, have to, not be able to have it under the tent. We may have to move to the inside. And I uh, thought we was got to do that one time before. But uh, no matter what we have to do, whether it's inside, outside, under the tent, or in the building, I'm praying God will get us to have a great revival. I'm praying my prayer has been this. God, would you please lay it upon the hearts of our people to back the meeting. Support the meeting. 
God, if you're a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I'm praying for you to be at your place in this revival every service. We can't have revival unless we can get on the glory, on the spout where the glory comes out. And I just really believe the Lord's going to anoint that tent or this building, whichever the case may be. We're planning for the tent. But I pray, pray God will just anoint the place that we'll assemble ourselves and God will anoint the hearts of the people. And they'll come to the realization that Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Lord and Jesus should be number one. If it wasn't for the cross, if it wasn't for the blood of the Lord Jesus that was shed in order that we could have life and have forgiveness of our sins, we'd have absolutely nothing to boast or bragging about this morning. But it's nothing that we've done within ourselves, but it's because of what he has done for us through his son, the Lord Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Thank God that it never loses its power. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sister Carolyn. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Well, I like to hear these good praise reports. I, heard pe- I like to hear people brag on Jesus. And uh, certainly today, he's worthy to be praised. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 uh, this morning. And while you're turning, uh, let me just say that we would like to take this opportunity to welcome those that may be uh, viewing our services this morning over the Internet. We're glad that this is made possible, and if you're not aware of what church you're listening to, this is the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Roebuck, South Carolina. We like to call it God's country, amen, and holy ground, and I appreciate so much what the Lord's done for us here, and we're just trying to win a few souls to Jesus. We're just trying to do, be obedient to his word and try to be obedient to his leadership and guidance, and uh just try to do what he'd have us do. So we welcome you uh, this morning as you view, by the way, of the Internet. And we do thank the Lord for that outreach and that ministry that's available that can be used in order to get somebody saved by the grace of God. If you're here in this building, you can get saved this morning. If you're watching over the Internet, you can get saved right there in your home or wherever you may be on your workplace or wherever you may be. You, you can get saved right there. And you as a Christian you can get help no matter where you're at this morning. So I'm just thankful that God is not limited. He's not a God. In, that, well, sometimes we try to put him in a box. But he's not a God in a box. He's outside the box. I want to, this morning, just bring a few things to you that I hope will help you. And uh, I know that uh, time is, is uh, quickly passing away. But uh, let me just mention to you here in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I want, I want to read uh, the first verse. And make a few comments, and, and then as the Lord leads, we'll, we'll continue on in the message. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, there's a couple of words, a few words in that first verse I'd like to point out to you. The first one is the very first word where it says wherefore. The word wherefore just simply means for which reason or because of. And then the word every, where it says every weight, the word every just simply means any, all, the hold, everyone, all things, everything. 
And it talks about the weight. It talks about the sin. But it uses also another word in that word in that verse, and it's the word beset. It says, which thus so easily beset us. Now the word beset there means to uh, place on or to surround or to enclose. What are some things that beset us? I believe there's people sometimes that beset us. I didn't say upset us, I said beset us. I believe there's people that beset, people that surround us and people that uh, uh, enclose us and people that get close to us that we allow to beset us. You may be glad or you may be sad this morning that you came. But the word beset, a lot of times, we use as a blessing. Blessing or besetting, which is it? Oh, yeah, God blesses us. He blesses us children. But God is not going to bless you to the extent that it hinders you and causes you with a burden that you cannot serve him and be faithful about it. And, boy, I'm telling you, I could get in a lot of trouble this morning with that. But I think you already know what I'm talking about. You see, I, don't, I, I didn't write the message. I'm just delivering it. But the Bible says the weight that so easily beset. You see, it's so easy to get beset. It. It's so easy to get surrounded with things that a lot of times we just allow to creep in and happen. And we don't really see what's happening. But it's a burden that's causing us not to run the race with patience. That's another word. Well, let me go on here. Not only does people beset us, but pleasures beset us. Ain't nothing wrong with taking a vacation. I am not against vacation. One of these days, I'm going to take one. There's nothing wrong with vacation. But there is something wrong with you allow pleasure of this world to beset you. Oh, preacher, we, we, we got to have a little enjoyment. Hey, the best time you can have is it right smack dab in the middle of the Holy Ghost filled, uh, uh, Spirit filled service. If you can have any better time than that, I want you to tell me what it is. I want to try it, amen. Mm. But I, I, if we're not careful, we'll be beset not only by people, but we'll be beset by some of the pleasures. And listen, there's nothing wrong with having a good time in, in a good Christian way. Thank God I enjoy having, I enjoy the life. I enjoy uh, going out and having fellowship and enjoy the, Boy, we had a good time this past Thursday night at the fish camp, amen. amen. Wasn't a real, real big deal, but boy, we had some good, good clean fun and had some good, good laughs and had some good fellowship. Boy, had some good food. We just had a good time all the way around. And I, I couldn't have been any more content anywhere else in my life than I was on Thursday night. And let me just say, hey, it was a good thing, amen. You missed it. You missed a treat, amen. You, you, you missed a free meal. And that's amazing when a Baptist will miss a free meal. I thought we'd probably have 500 there Thursday night. <laughs> but not only do we allow people to beset us, but not only do we allow pleasures to beset us, but let me just say this morning also that we become passive. And that besets us. Now, the word passive is, is we, we relate that a lot of time to, a, to an English term which has to do with an inactive verb. I'm doing good teachers. I'm doing good teachers. That's what passive means, means to be inactive. Yeah. At least I'm improving, amen. I ain't going to say ain't. <laughs> but when you begin to think being passive, people today are, 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 are when, when you use the word passive, they sort of settle down. They sort of like on disability. They sort of like retired. They sort of like lazy. Can anybody relate to any of those terms? <laughs> Ain't calling no names this morning, but the, you know, I always heard the old dog that gets, does the barking is the one that gets hit with a rock. 
But we allow these things to beset us. And when they beset us, then we certainly a lot of times get upset. And it's nobody's fault but our own. Another word that I see there in that verse is the word run. A lot of our physically, a lot of us, our, our physical running days are over. Unless we just absolutely have to. <laughs> but spiritually speaking, we should not allow these besetting things, these weights, these burdens, these sins to keep us from running the race with patience. But if we're not real careful, it will cause us to do that. Now there's a lot of folk here this morning that probably are NASCAR fans. Are they racing today? Are they having a race today? Brother Sam, I know Brother Sam will know. He's a NASCAR fan, and that's okay. I got no qualms against people being a NASCAR fan, baseball fan, basketball fan, whatever. Fan, but I'll tell you right now, you're number one fan. You ought to be a number one fan of Jesus. Hey, I, wait, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we ought to get us some of them sponge uh, number one uh, uh, things they wear at the ball game. Jesus number one, amen? You know, some of you wouldn't bring one of them to church, but you'd take it to a ball game. Ah, oh, preacher, I'm too ashamed to do that inside the church. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about those things that beset us, those things that hinder, those things that burden and those sins that keep us from running the race with patience. But I do know this, in a NASCAR race, I've, I've been to a few. I've watched a few. I'm not involved in to it as much as I used to be at one time. But I've noticed in a race that those cars just don't run the whole race without making a pit stop. They got to pull in somewhere and get some gas and get a change of tires. And maybe sometimes they even have to change a driver because of fatigue and exhaustion. And let me just say, there's nothing wrong with making a pit stop. But you better be careful of the pitfalls as you run the race with patience. I want you to notice here in this particular passage, and I'll tell you what, I, I, I just don't, I, I had a hard time this morning putting this together. I'll be honest with you, the devil really, really fought. He didn't want me to say this morning what the Lord wants me to say. And that's okay. I'm glad it's that way. I, I, I'm thankful today that the devil tries to hinder. If he wasn't trying to hinder us, then we would not be doing something right. But I think the thing that we need to realize this morning is the fact that we're getting next week, starting next Sunday night, the services start, is our revival, and the, and the devil don't want us to get the things out of our life that beset us and hinder us and burden us and the sin that keeps us from running the race with patience. I said a moment ago that if you're saved by the grace of God this morning, there's some things you need to do. You don't need to pray about it. You don't need to talk to the preacher about it. You don't need to talk to your Sunday school teacher about it. You don't need to talk to the family about it. You need to talk to the Lord about it because you know that there's things not pleasing unto the Lord and it's besetting you from doing what you should for Christ. Like I say, there's a change that takes place. There's a change that happens. There's a change that comes apart and comes about in a person's life. The Bible says that Bitter and sweet water don't come out of the same fountain. You can't say that I'm saved if you continue living in the things that's unpleasing until, just to put it bluntly, you can't claim that you're saved if you can continue to live in sin. You see, that's what's happened to our people in our churches today. They come in, they say they get saved. We say, well, that's wonderful and that's great, but yet they continue doing the same old things they do and the preacher is scared to preach against it. He's scared to warn them. He's scared to exhort them. He's scared to rebuke them. And therefore, that's what caused a lot of people's lives to get so besetting that they cannot be used of the Lord. I say the shouting message, but it's the truth this morning. 
Boy, I tell you, the thing that would thrill my heart and thrill my soul <laughs> would to see revival break out around here. You say, preacher, would it, hey, would it excite you if the community of Roebuck got revived? Oh, yes, it would. It would excite me above all extremes I could even think of. But what would excite me even more than that if Emmanuel Baptist Church, if they got revived, amen. If the deacons and the Sunday school teachers and the choir and the musicians and the, and the people that are sitting, hey, even the preacher, if we just get revived to the point that we realize there's some things in our life that we got to get out of the way so we won't be besetting a man. God's not going to bless you. I, I have a problem sometimes when people say, the Lord's blessed me with this, the Lord's blessed me with that, the Lord's... Listen, God is not going to bless you with something that's going to keep you out of the Lord's house when he said in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling together as the manner of some is, even so much more as you see the day approaching, God's not going to go contrary to his word. Now, you may call it a blessing, but it may be besetting. You understand what I'm trying to say this morning? Some of you looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate. But that's so true this morning. A lot of times we say, God blessed me and God did this for me and God did that for me in order that I can do this. Oh, let me just say this morning, God expects you to be obedient to his word. Now listen, he could care less if you're obedient to the preacher. And I know what some people say. Well, the preacher just wants us to be there all the time and, 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 and he just don't understand. No, I, hey, there's a lot. Hey, thank God I don't understand a lot of things. But I'm telling you one thing, I do know this book. And there's some people been in church long enough, been in church all their lives. And they allow things to come along to beset them from running the race with patience. Basically, you all just throw the towel in. Amen? Well, y'all here this morning. Y'all, some of y'all, oh, y'all don't need to hear all this. But this is just in case for next week, amen. Store it up and use it, amen. But let me just say, there's some things that we allow to beset us and we allow those weights and those burdens, and we have to be so careful. A moment ago when I used the word people, uh, that things that beset us, I'm not talking about a lot of times our friends at work. I'm talking about even sometimes our families. For instance, can I, can I throw a for instance in here? I don't have anybody show up at my house on Sunday deep dinner or Sunday afternoon about church time thinking I'm going to stay at church and feed them. You probably don't either, a lot, most of you. Hey, no, we're going to go church. They know we're going to the house of God. We, we ain't going to stay in feet. Then we're going to get fed ourselves. <laughs> Amen. But there's a lot of people say, well, I can't come today, preacher, because I'm fixing dinner for so-and-so. Well, so what? Get them a McDonald's Happy Meal. Hey, chicken nuggets, you can buy 20 of them now for $4.99. And they ain't bad. What are you saying, preacher? You say, preacher, that just seems sort of uh, insignificant it is, but you're getting the message. You know what I'm talking about. We allow these things to beset us. And if we are being beset, then that means that we're not going forward for Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing is what we're doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. God saved us and forgave us of all of our sins and God has done marvelous and wonderful things for us. And I'm telling you, folks, if there's ever been a reason why we ought to be going forward for the Lord Jesus Christ, it is now. We deserve hell, even at our very best. But thank God, according to his mercy, he saved us. According to his grace, his love has shined upon us. Every one of us in this building this morning, we've done enough since we've been saved to send us to hell. The glory to God ain't going there. I said, I wasn't going to use that word, ain't. But I'm not going there. Why, preacher? Why aren't you going there? Hey, one day it was taken care at the foot of Calvary. Today, I cried out and called upon a holy God to be merciful unto me a sinner and save my ever-dying soul and cleanse me with his precious blood. He took care of all of that, thank God. That's the only thing we have to hope in. Once we get saved, once we get born again, once we get uh, uh, cleansed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only thing the devil can do is try to beset you. Try to throw you off track. Try to throw you off guard. Try to get you from facing and looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's what he's out to do. Devil bother you this week? Anybody in here the devil bothered this week? Boy, if he didn't, I'd be checking up this morning. I'd be checking up this morning. He bothers us. He tries to hinder. He tries to be set up because that's the only thing he can do because we're already saved and we're saved forever throughout eternity. Nothing can change that. Nothing can ever uh, cause that not to happen and take place. Hey, thank God the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. But we can get beset him. And that's where a lot of times the devil gets a foothold. You see, you're saved. Those of you that are saved by the grace, you're saved. The only thing he can do is beset you. But because he, bese- because he besets you, he might keep somebody else from getting saved. You've heard the phrase, you could be the only Bible that some people ever read. He could beset you and cause you to stumble and cause you to fall and cause you to bring a reproach upon the Lord and keep that person that you may have been witnessing to or that person that you work with or maybe a family member or somebody you just run in at Walmart might keep them from being saved and birthed into the family of God if he can get us beset him. What are you saying, preacher? I'm just saying Jesus should be the most important thing in your life. I know there's sicknesses and I know there's problems and I know there's times when people are unable to attend church like they should and ought to. And I know sometimes people have to work on Sunday. And I, and, and, and I understand that. But folks, we like to be honest. I can name several people this morning that has absolutely no excuse for not being here. And they don't have to answer to me. And they're not going to answer to me. But they're going to answer. So what happening is they're being besetting. We're trying to have and want to have revival, folks. I'm praying God will send revival. I'm praying our people will have a burden to come and get in, amen. Here's some good preaching and some good singing. Allow the Spirit of God to move upon their heart and move in their life and move amongst our people. That when the revival is over, we can't sit back and say, well, it was just another few days of meeting. No, hey, I want it to be something that will change us. I want to be changed. I want to be revived. I want to be helped. I want to be strengthened. And God knows my heart is pastor. I want my people to be strengthened and helped. I want my people to be encouraged. I want my people to just totally sell out to God and do what's pleasing and honorable unto Him that we can get past this thing where we are beset, where we are burdened, where we are held back from running the race patience well I'm telling you still yet to be seen what an individual what God can do with an individual just so totally sell out to God and if that's the truth of that and I believe it is 100% truth I, it, it, it's just amazing what God could do with a family that would just totally completely settle and sell out to God and say God you're going to be it Joshua said uh, he said that's for me and my house we're going to serve God. As for me and my house, they can have all. It alarms me. I, we got, in fact, next Sunday will be the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy that took place in America 10 years ago. That time, boy, they was ready to pray. It was calling on people to pray. It's called on the, the, the people in office to pray. It's called on churches to pray. But you know what they've done now? On the celebration of, uh, well, the celebration observance, I guess you would call, uh, of the 9-11 tragedy, they have forbidden and have banned prayer at the day of that memorial. Ten years ago, they were crying, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. And now they don't even want you to pray. God's not through with America, I'm telling you. Hey, I'm American to the top of my head to the sole of my feet. 
And I'm proud to be in my old glory. I can't wait for the day when we get our lights up there in the prayer garden and we get to put them military flags up and we get to put that Christian flag up. We get to put the flag up of the United States of America. I can't wait for the day that we get to do that. And I'm an American that's just, just as solid as ever has been one. But let me just say this this morning, folks. America is in trouble when we allow them people to say, we can't pray to the God of heaven. There's things that are besetting us. And we're sitting around and watching it and letting it take place. Oh, we may not be able to do nothing in New York. We might not be able to do nothing in Washington, D.C. But, folk, I'm telling you, if God would get a hold of the little church here in Emmanuel Baptist Church in Roebuck, South Carolina, I believe the people in this neighborhood will see what God can do from people that are allowed to be used of the Lord. Ain't looking to make no name for myself. Not looking to make no name for this church. But I'm telling you right now, I want to lift him up. He said, when we go through troubles and we go through trials, you know what he said? He says, I'll lift you up. But let me just say this morning, folks, the Bible says that he must be lifted up. Besetting is a way downward. Revival is a way upward. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Sister Linda's going to play for us on the piano. I don't really know what else I could say other than just tell you this morning I got a burden. I got a burden to cease a move of God among this people. This morning, if you have that burden, this morning, if you have a need, this morning, if there's things in your life that you allow them to beset you, would you make your way to this altar? A number of folk are already coming. Thank God for that. I'm telling you, folk, when There's three things we need to do. We need to pray. We need to pray. And we need to pray. In the book of 2 Chronicles, the Bible says, If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, and pray, he said, I will heal their land. We got a land that needs healing today. America's in terrible shape, folk. We may make may not make a lot of difference in, in Washington D.C. and some of the other large cities in this world, but listen, folk, let's try to make a difference where we're at, beginning with our own lives, beginning with our families.